So we first asked for these documents and plans in September of 2021. And the law requires us to get an answer within about three weeks. We filed public records request in July of 2021. 200 days pass without anyone in any of the agencies that we filed these requests, not one document has been produced, not one. They stonewalled. It makes you wonder, what are they hiding? So this lawsuit is all about something that happened um, early on in the Biden administration, where President Biden released a, what's called an executive order uh, directing all the federal agencies to uh, get involved in voter outreach and voter registration. And that sounds innocuous, but the reality is that that's actually a very partisan activity. It's something that's been done by candidates and political parties uh, and folks who want to influence an election. It's not a government activity. It's not something they've done before and it's the federal government, whereas elections are run by the state. That raised the red flags for us, and we wanted to know, well, what are they actually going to do? What are these agencies uh, going to do to get voters um, out and registration? And so we asked for the plans, we asked for the documents, and citizens, all Americans, are entitled to see what their government is doing and to get the plans and to ask for them. And so what we're concerned about is that the federal government would be doing something that would uh, help one party, particularly the left, as we've seen um, groups from the left be part of this effort and even advise the federal government on how to create these plans. So we want to see what's there and make sure that nothing is happening that's illegal or unlawful or would unnecessarily influence the outcome of the elections this fall. As a lawyer and an election policy expert, I've had the great privilege over the last two years to be in the states and work with state lawmakers. And our founders set up our system in a really great way, in a very effective way. And that is that the Constitution gives the authority over elections to the states. That's how it should be. It's state lawmakers that are closest to the people. It is state lawmakers who are responsive when there are issues about security, accountability, transparency, and of course the bottom line, voter confidence. Because voters need to be able to trust the process in order to be able to trust the results of any election. One of the most important reforms that states have passed, they passed a reform called Zuckerbucks, and I'm not sure everybody understands what this is, but what it is is during the 2020 election, Mark Zuckerberg of Facebook fame and his wife donated over $400 million to election offices. And it was pitched largely as grants to help during the pandemic and have a pandemic safe election, but that's not what the grants were used for. They were used for the actual administration of elections, essentially get out the vote efforts for the Democratic Party. And in places like states like Pennsylvania, 90% of the grant money did not go to PPE or helping have a pandemic safe election because it allowed a third party, Mark Zuckerberg, to pick winners and losers in the elections. Fortunately, thanks in large part to a nationwide investigation FGA launched and led, 23 states have responded to this threat by passing bans to keep private money out of the administration of elections. Over the last two years, they've tried at the federal level, Congress, to pass uh, a one-size-fits-all to federalize elections. And guess what? They failed. But Biden had a fail-safe, a backdoor plan to take over elections. Biden Bucks is the name most people use when referring to the executive order signed by Biden back in March 2021, EO 14019. So we call it Biden Bucks because it's a lot like a similar election scheme the left carried out in 2020. But here's the bad news. Biden Bucks is Zucker Bucks on steroids. Instead of Mark Zuckerberg leading the effort, it's Joe Biden. And instead of $400 million, it is unlimited funding and resources with the power and reach of the federal government and its offices located in states across the country. Here's what it orders. Within 200 days of the date of this order, the head of each agency shall submit to the assistant to the president of domestic policy, that's Susan Rice, by the way, a name that people I think are familiar with, a strategic plan outlining the ways identified under this review that the agency can promote voter registration and voter participation. Now, that sounds like a lot of legalese, and it is, 
But what does that really mean? That means mobilizing get the Democratic vote. This is not just get out the vote, it's get out the Democratic vote. Biden, as the executive branch, the head of the executive branch, does not have authority over state elections. State legislatures do, and Congress to a much lesser degree. But what this means is it's his way of mobilizing these state-based agencies. It's, it's federal agencies that he's demanding do this, but it's their state-based offices. And he's ordering, not only that, but he's ordering third parties. And I want to read to you from the executive order what he's demanding third parties do. Soliciting and facilitating approved nonpartisan third party organizations and state officials to provide voter registration services on agency premises. Again, this is a lot of legalese, but what does this mean? It means that Biden and all of his partisan appointees get a pick which third parties they want to come in and register people. So imagine that. We have no idea what qualifications. There's no vetting process. This is all being done behind closed doors. Biden Bucks was not dreamed up by the Biden administration. It was dreamed up by Demos. Demos is a well-funded, radical left-wing group that hates everything our country stands for and wants to destroy it and rebuild it from within. Shortly before this order was signed, Biden hired the president of Demos and its director of legal strategies and place them into key positions to help carry out this order. One of them was even embedded into the department that is responsible for approving the legality of executive orders, including this illegal executive order. And they are now in the White House carrying out the plan they created. Now, obviously, encouraging more people to vote sounds like a good thing on the surface, and it is. At FGA, we strive to make it easy to vote, but hard to cheat. The problem with this order is that it only strives to make it easy to vote for one class of voters, those more likely to vote Democrat. In the end, it is a massive get out the vote effort designed by the left to benefit the left, all paid for on the backs of federal taxpayers. It is illegal, unethical, and unconstitutional, and that's why FGA is working so hard to stop it. And I was just really struck by how quickly people can lose confidence in voting and in elections. Um, and so that's why I really care about uh, this lawsuit and why I'm glad that FGA is uh, diving into elections. We know that the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services is going to turn 1,400 community health centers into voter registration hubs. So that means people who are coming in for benefits, they are going to have third parties who are trying to mobilize them to vote in these state-based agencies. And the U.S. Department of Labor is going to turn 2,300 American job centers into voter registration agencies with third-party groups at each site. What about the U.S. Department of Agriculture? They're allowing food stamp agencies to use administrative funds to register voters. Think about this. The Department of Health and Human Services, the Department of Labor, the Department of Agriculture. What role do they have in elections? The answer is none. So while the administration has released some details of which agencies specifically will help carry out this order and how, the details have been extremely limited. But what has been released is deeply troubling. Other agencies have announced similar plans to use their resources and their offices in the exact same unprecedented way. So essentially what this is going to become is votes for benefits. Okay, that is not, that is not the way a federal agency should conduct business. All of these actions have one thing in common. They all center on using the power, reach, and taxpayer-funded resources of these federal agencies to target specific subgroups of voters, those the left presumes are more likely to vote Democrat. Again, this is not about voter registration. It is about turning out only one kind of voter for the next election. Well, we waited and we still hadn't gotten anything by July of 2022, so almost a year after we'd asked for them. And that's when we felt like we really had to file this lawsuit just to get these documents and find out what are they hiding? What is it that's so hard for them to provide uh, for, for us to see and the American public to see? If there's nothing sinister in the plans, why not simply share them with the American people? We wanted to shine a light on Biden Buck's scheme and gather evidence we could share with state and federal lawmakers to help stop this scheme before the midterm elections. And this was like almost his insurance policy, all right? So if we can't federalize elections through Congress, he put this in as an insurance policy as a, as a backdoor way to get what he wants. 
We filed public records request in July of 2021. 200 days pass without anyone in any of the agencies that we filed these requests. Not one document has been produced. Not one. They stonewalled. The American people have a right to know the full details of this unprecedented effort by the president before it's too late. So in response, FGA has sued the Department of Justice in federal court. We believe that a federal order commanding the DOJ to respond to our lawful request will spur the other agencies to also provide the requested documents. If it doesn't, we'll sue them too. You, under the law, federal government, you have an obligation to the voters to provide these documents. So that was 200 days past, so in April of 2022, we filed suit against the Department of Justice. And just in July of 2022, a federal judge agreed with us. Yeah, so on July 12th, the judge made a ruling in our case, firmly rejecting the Biden administration's effort to delay providing us the documents the law requires. Until, get this, they wanted to wait until next year. Fortunately, the judge didn't buy their arguments, and instead he ordered the Biden administration to provide the documents before the midterm elections. We're actually gonna know what the strategic plans look like, and we're gonna share that information with voters, the American people, with state lawmakers, and with Congress, because it's gonna be up to them, the, the lawmakers, to decide what to do with it. Even the court is wondering, what is DOJ trying to hide? The good news is, whatever the Biden administration is hiding, they won't be hiding it for long. And this really isn't about trying to redo some past election, 2020 or, or another election in the past, but about taking the lessons learned of things that didn't go well and fixing those for future elections. Our vision is that in the future, people can wake up the day after elections and know who won and believe that it was accurate, fair, and trustworthy. The states can fight back, and they should fight back in three really key areas. So first and foremost, any new federal funding that comes in needs to be approved by the legislature. And any new federal guidance, that's number two, that comes in, that also needs to be approved by the legislature. You cannot have the feds coming in through administrative fiat telling state election officials how to run their elections without the legislature affirmatively saying, yes, this is how we want it done. And third, they can require any communications that come from the Department of Justice or any other federal agencies to the state bureaucrats that run elections, any communications that also needs to go to both the governor and the legislature. That is basic transparency. You can't have the feds backdooring uh, changes in election procedures and policies and laws without knowledge and also approval by the legislature. If you want to join our fight to stop this unprecedented effort by the Biden administration, please find us online at thefga.org.